I call you more and more, potentially less a more, an unfathomable yeah. amount of a more because yeah. you have more. But what happens if there's a different amount of a more? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Variable a more. Right. Right. In flux a more. Plus or minus a more. It's you don't know. Days vary. Uh, it changes. A general sense of a more. Kind of a more. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> roundabout a more roundabout schrodinger's a more like there's just there's <laughs> is he a more is he not it's there's more or there's less of them today i don't know brick's o'brien here suppose. yes i'm sorry yes i i am i am here i have i have assimilated i don't that's not the right adjective i'm an author you you published a freaking book dude congratulations this thank is, you thank this you this is overdue we haven't talked about, but it's been a while since you've been on the show a lot of stuff has happened since so how how has the book been? How's everything gone uh, now that it's out there in the world and you've been able to send it to all your 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 backers and all that? So the book has been going as best as it can possibly be. Um, there's been so many interesting roadblocks that I am I'm getting to know firsthand from multiple angles. Um, I can't thank Kevin enough for continuing to uh, be a listening ear as the circus continues to be in town, as he says. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we we s tend to find new things out about how the book is doing every day. Uh, for example, last night at the time of this recording, during my Fireside Friday chat, we discovered that the book was listed on Target.com wow. and Walmart.com and in Amazon UK, and I wasn't told about any of it. So there's a lot of uh, things that have unfolded and it's all super overwhelming and and very good things to have happen, but it's so much at once with with getting the word out there about it. And when people see the book and they connect with it, it really resonates and it's awesome. So it's just about getting that out there more into the world for the next generation of kids who want to be pro gamers like Mr. Bricks O'Brien or like Mr. More More or whoever it might be. Yeah. Congratulations. That is incredible. Like Thank it's you. no it's no easy feat to get a book out there. And the fact that you got you got it kickstarted and it, it's in the world and now it's listed on all these sites that is a huge accomplishment. So congratulations again. You know, Pro Thank Gamer's you. Guide to Healthy Habits, Brian Saviano. Kevin Hinkle, check them out. It's it's wonderful. You'll find you'll find it on. I mean, you can search for it now. You'll find it. On you can literally places. right search for it anywhere. Um, we're in the process of getting, hopefully, a reprint done because the demand has been so out there. Uh, we initially printed off a thousand copies, and it seems like it's not enough. So mm -hmm. you know, people want to get more of it, and I. It's, what's going to stop me? Right. Yeah. So I'm going to get it out there as much as I can. So. Yeah, look it up anywhere. Uh, bookstores, just Google it. All the information is there, including info on the Kickstarter that happened earlier in 2022. Yeah. Accomplished author will soon be just a thing added. Maybe you can write that on the Hot Pocket card. <laughs> <laughs> on the Hot Pocket, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the Hot Pocket thing since we're, we're kind of there? 100%. I don't want to talk about the let's Hot Pocket thing. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to bring it up later, but let's talk about So this whole thing happened with Hot Pocket. Why don't you tell the story? on how Bricks O'Brien got to where he is with Hot Pockets today. Sure. So I was uh, reached out to about this Hot Pockets competition thing uh, that they were pushing for as a new marketing campaign to engage with uh, content creators in a different way. And so the premise of it was to create a two-minute video that showcases you and your community. And after that is all done and they select their finalists, then your community has to vote for you in a one week voting period. And my initial thought to hearing that was like, there's absolutely no way I'm going to win because all it takes is one big fish that has a hundred thousand YouTube subscribers and 10,000 Twitch followers to come in to the small pond, swallow me up. And then boom, there I go. I'm gone into the abyss of nothing. And they never hear from me ever again. Right. Right. Um, but when I looked at who was entering into the competition, at the moment, there were a lot of very, um, very, uh, they, they were just in the process of starting their content creation. 
And I'm like, well, this hasn't grabbed the attention. I think that they wanted to quite yet with like the bigger stars that I'm sure they're maybe like looking for Mm -hmm. considering the prize package as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, well I could try this. And then as I was doing a Minecraft live stream about uh, building a pirate ship, I pulled the chat and said, Hey, should I enter this hot pocket thing? And they said, absolutely. Yes, you should. And I turned my pirate ship into the hot pocket pirate ship and developed a little plot with poop deck Pete and then poop deck Pete number two, (laughs) because the first poop deck Pete died. And I cut that intertwined with my ability to showcase uh, the community and whatnot. And I made that into a two minute video. I got in as a finalist and then through reminding people every single day across every single platform and avenue I have and going into Twitch chats and not even saying, hey, vote for me, but people like you, Amor, and Amish Ace, and Zach, and everyone else that's like, yes, it takes two seconds to vote. Go vote for Brian. You don't even need to sign up for the email notifications. Just vote for him. Yeah. Pick a zip code, vote for him. Like, <laughs> by any any means necessary. And through me reminding everybody and the overwhelming passion from the LEGO community Everyone who watches on Twitch, Discord, the Mom Squad, every every avenue, I secured the win. Yeah, and I was like, "Cool, awesome." So why don't I celebrate this with everybody that helped me uh, get to this point? And I did a live unboxing of like five thousand dollars worth of gear, which is why I was so surprised that like not more people were getting involved with this quite yet because it was ju- literally just starting. And this prize package is incredible. So. Right. Not only do I get a year's supply of Hot Pockets, a jersey, and all sorts of other stuff, but I get uh, like this equipment, and then there's actually uh, like a sponsored content I get to do, and then there's a, a little bit of prize money at the very end of that. So it's like a good prize package that you get, and all it took was applying myself and believing in myself as much as I could and reminding people to vote for me, which is what secured me the the win for the Hot Pockets 120 competition. It secured me this really dope Wave 3 microphone with the Hot Pockets branding on it. Are you kidding me? Look at this thing if you're listening on the video version of the show. It's amazing. It's it's a beautiful Wave 3 mic, but it's in red, which you can't normally get. And then it has all this Hot Pocket, like it has the, the logo, some branding, and some other bits on it that are, you know, Hot Pocket centric. But... That is really like just even the color alone is going to be cool on your, you know, just having on your desk and having it in the stream. And then you got a jersey. You got a freaking yeah. hot pocket jersey. Look at you. I'm going to wear this to the clubs and I'm going to get married in it with the women I meet at the clubs, dude. I I believe it. You'll be tossing those hot pocket vouchers in the air like <laughs> like cash money, man. You'll just <laughs> right. Just exactly. You'll exactly. Just be, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I got Hot Pockets for a year, baby. Right. The the right woman is going to be all about it. So, hey, <laughs> that's all it takes is one. You're like, look, look, how 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 many Hot Pockets can you eat? Because I got you. I got you. I got you, girl. I don't, yeah, so I don't they, know how it goes. They give me a stack. I don't, I don't think I have the stack on me necessarily but it's a stack of 52 coupons that are good for two pack boxes or five pack pockets so or it, it's either good for a two piece box or five piece box so that's like 250 hot pockets in a year so that's a lot you know everything in moderation everybody um don't eat hot pockets every day eat them of course but it's a lot of hot pockets yeah yeah that's a lot of hot pockets and as somebody said in the chat here, core Bob, and then it expires and then I get divorced. So once the vouchers are expired in <laughs> March, 2023, then I'm out or 2024. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I guess you're going to have to win more hot pockets somehow. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, hey, well, can't knock the hustle. Got to keep the momentum going, you know? Yeah. It was a really cool contest because it was, uh, you know, as, as we mentioned, you know, you got this wave three mic. There's all this Elgato related swag because they're the they're the partner in the whole contest so you got the, like the prize pack is huge there's all these yeah. elgato products there's a, a corsair uh laptop involved it was a very cool prize pack as well as these 
these branding opportunities for you. So congratulations again. Uh, that's Thank just you. incredible. And, you know, I, 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 you and I talked about this when you were in the finalist run and I, I, you know, I said that if you, if you win, I'll consider, I'll consider doing it. And then uh, you, you totally won, which totally affirmed this whole uh, me, me, me uh, doing it. So I, I did submit a video. It's actually maybe, maybe I'll be next, right? You, you never know, yeah. right, Brian? The, the biggest thing, and I'm sure I'll talk about this across other interviews and whatnot I do. It's just about reminding people to vote once you are a finalist. Uh -huh. The people that they bring into being finalists range from, you know, someone like my size as a creator to people that have literally 30 Twitter followers and two concurrent viewers on Twitch. So yeah. if you're like, oh, well, you know, uh, get that attitude out of the way. I had that attitude. And it, like I, I applied for the Hot Pockets thing like for two reasons. One. Um, the the story arc that came up with the hot pocket pirate ship and poop yeah. deck Pete and everything, yeah, yeah, gold. How could I not? A and yeah. B, it became a microcosm of okay, here's this thing. I want to set my mind to accomplishing this thing, and then once I became the finalist, in which before I thought I was out. Um, once yeah. I became a finalist, I'm like, okay, well, looking at the other people, there's nobody who's a Goliath creator that can, you know, gobble me up. So yeah. let me put my absolute maximum effort in remind people on, on Facebook every day, because you know, the moms, the parents want to support me, but they got a lot of stuff going on. So I'm going to remind them every day, Twitter, that's where the platform uh, it's being held on uh, is on Twitter, the whole competition. So I'm reminding them there YouTube posts on the live streams. We have a hot pockets command starring Amish Ace. There's a special uh, Bob Pocket sticker. If I end up winning, I'll make it into a sticker, and we did. And then Kevin created it and sold out of the design. So, like, doing everything I could to celebrate this idea that the Hot Pockets thing could be an actual thing and then involving people as much as I possibly could. Not, like, for the memes, for the lulls, for the whatever, yeah. but that's what helps secure it for me. So. Yeah, that's what you kind of have to look at when you're applying yourself. And I know you're going to do that because like yeah. the Lego community and especially on Twitch is always fired up about everything. They don't have to buy anything or download or make an account. It's literally just reminding people to vote. And I know like you would be great for doing that. So I have every anticipation of seeing you in the finals and I see no reason why you could not like get it yourself, you know? I appreciate that, man. Thank you for being that push and encouragement because, you know, like it, I think you and I have very similar reasons for doing it in that it's to it, it, it's to prove, you know, that we are we are doing the thing, right? We're 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 not just here kind of going through the motions. We're actually uh, applying ourselves, like you said making the content, getting at, like outreaching to the community and, you know, just being a presence online. And so uh, I'm, I'm doing it for those, those same reasons as well. And we'll see, maybe we'll get in the finals and, and then, you know, I'll be right there with you fanning myself with hot pocket vouchers <laughs> wearing my hot pockets I, Jersey and we could go to the club together. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, it, I have every hope and belief that it will happen. Your video is quality. And your presence on Twitch with these interviews you do, your positivity and and your demeanor, most importantly, is is on par with like what I would want in terms of being interviewed or just like talking with people in general. Like, yeah. you know what you're doing. You are good at what you do. You have the consistency, which is like one of the key aspects, if not the key aspect where podcasts typically, you know, don't go past episode 20. I don't know what episode you're on. I, I like it's it's crazy. This so 30, this is episode 37. 37. So like you're already ahead of the curve on so many other people who are trying to start up this thing, myself included, which we'll talk about at some point, but like yeah. there's you have every single thing going for you to make this thing a continued success and a hot pockets would exemplify that. So I have I have no issue believing that you'll be a finalist and that you will win this. So I, I, I sanction you 
to to be in the competition. I have no pull. I will stuff every ballot if I can, but then I'd probably get kicked out. So I'm not going to, but you know. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. And I, I want to let you know that, you know, with this Hot Pocket thing and, and your book and all, the, there's so many freaking things that have happened since we last there talked has. on here that I am super freaking proud of you. You have been just pushing and and building and growing and doing all this cool stuff. Releasing a book is not easy. Putting yourself out there every time for these uh, contests is not easy. Uh, you also won another competition, like the the whole extra life Minecraft thing. Like oh yeah, you yourself. Forgot. You put yourself. <laughs> you, you yeah. The look on your face is like, did I get that wrong? I swore you won it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I did. I I won. <laughs> I'm like, what a, what a competition? Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. The, the PlayStation that's looming behind me on the video version right now. Yeah. Yes, that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a that freaking right there. PS5 back there <laughs> that you won from an extra life event that was being held that included a bunch of content creators, streamers. You you are just absolutely killing it. And uh, you know, I I would attribute that to your work ethic your standards that you hold yourself to in terms of quality of content and just continuing to do the things that I think a lot of us, when we see that, especially as content creators, we're like, I don't know, man, I don't know if I could do this. Like you said earlier, you know, get that, get that stuff out of your head, right? Where we're just pull the trigger and go for it. I'm, I'm just proud of you, man. I'm well, thank you. Excited. It's, it's so much going on at any given time. And it doesn't come without its stress and it's a, it's anxiety and sometimes lack of sleep. A lot of times lack of sleep. And for me, it's, it's discipline and growing up through, you know, middle school, high school, I was never the most disciplined person and I, I don't want it to consume me all that much, but it, it forces me to continue to do more. And if it isn't for the positive reactions that I get from people not not prompted by me but mm -hmm. it was it was done that's what keeps me going the example i literally got today and i've only told i only told one person about this so I'll, I'll tell you guys i got a text message from uh peter hornberger who is a um a professor at penn state abington which i did a virtual talk with uh at this time like last year he took his pro gamers guide shirt to a trip he's currently at in germany this guy, who's a professor at a college, took my shirt, took Kevin's shirt yeah. with him on vacation. A, I didn't tell him to do it. B, the second half of the text message was there was a language barrier, Brian, but there was this probably three-year-old German kid that came up to me and wanted to see what was on my shirt because of how cool the characters looked. Yeah. And I, you're, you're doing a good thing, so keep doing it, Brian. Reading that gives me chills because it was a to I had no involvement with that situation. But to know that there was somebody in a in the opposite side of the world that liked what I did, what Kevin did out in the wild, that changed that's everything. And not everybody has the privilege to get feedback like that. And it's one instance. So imagine what I could do what we could do as a community, as, as whoever, if we applied ourselves continuously without hesitation, without yeah. letting ourselves get stuck in our own headspace continuously, there's crazy and amazing things that can happen. Why not allow it to happen and keep doing more? That's what keeps me going at two o'clock in the morning when five of my Pokemon Scarlet videos get trashed because my audio is out of sync and i can't oh, use it which is what happened the other night Crap. and i could have went to bed and been like ah forget about it but i wanted to release a video at 7 a.m and i did and yeah. it successfully went out so yeah. yeah that's that's it for me what what is where's your head out at now that you've you've kind of accomplished all this stuff since we last talked what is what are you focusing on now that you have done some of these other things and they're under your like under your belt? 
Yeah. So 2023 for me is going to be a pivot of sorts because in 2021, or I'm sorry, 2022, what, what is time anymore? Right. I focused a lot on traveling and going to all the different shows for all the different reasons and really streamlining, optimizing my, my time, either with producing videos, content, um, in general, how can I, how can I streamline a lot of that? Is it beneficial for me to go to Boston comic-con uh, with my own booth where the target audience is comic book people, not for the children's book. Well, probably not. So where can I allocate that time and energy most effectively? And I have my ideas, as I always do, but I am the Kevin Feige of my own uh, Pro Gamers Guide universe, and I have to let things play out as they will, right? right. So <laughs> I have plans as as the author, as the whatever you want to call it for all, like all the pro gamers guide stuff, you know, nothing's whatever. It's all, it's all in my head. Mm -hmm. And then there's also all the bricks O'Brien things. Okay. Well, how do I get people to continue to go to my live streams on Twitch? If I'm even streaming on Twitch, how do I get people to my YouTube playthrough videos? And then, you know, streamlining that workflow for Kidoodle or for Roku and trying to hone in on those things, which becomes especially difficult when not even that I'm just a one man operation, but because I work alone in these four walls, I'm, I'm fairly social. So when I'm like alone for a long period of time, I start, you go, you go crazy. You just, yeah. you go crazy. So I'm trying to strike that balance at the same time while also trying to do new things like podcasts. I, of all the things that I do, I don't have a podcast that I do consistently like you do. And I'm very, I don't want to say jealous, envious, or I don't, whatever the, I don't know what the word is, but like a podcast seems like something I should have under my belt. That is a me thing because yeah. it makes so much sense for my brand and what I do, but it's not. Yeah. So how can I go about doing that without overexerting myself and do it consistently like how you're doing? Yeah. It's another consideration I've had. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited that you're looking at that as another avenue of content and, you know, honestly, podcasting is something that is, you know, it's like everything else you make. It's time, you know, whether it's getting guests on, if it's guest oriented, if recording it, editing, just like making any other video or piece of content. It's a whole it's a whole thing. But I'm, I'm glad that you're looking at it. Um, I I have some other stuff in the works that I, I would love to include you in. And you and I have talked a little bit about that. So we'll we'll share that at a future date but of course and then also you know your your live streams have been growing in in full force lately i've have noticed. they so, well, i feel like I, they have i haven't noticed I feel, like I, just... they, I feel like they have i don't know i could be completely wrong but you know they're 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 always popping when i swing by so you know it's looking uh, you know looking good may, maybe the hot pocket thing has boosted it like a little bit but i don't i don't think the the clout of that is is like what got me through on Twitter. Like it's it's not it's not like oh this guy's a hot pocket brand ambassador. Let's go check him out. Like that's right, not right, necessarily right. it. Yeah. Maybe it 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 restoked the fire of people that I already had, and you know I've been more aggressive, for lack of a better word, with like getting people to Twitch to understand what the live stream experience is by comparison of the other video content I do. Um, that that might be it. Mm -hmm. But I'm still looking at how can I make the best live streams I can a entertaining show having not a lot of like downtime um, and how or or if I even am having like a more chill live stream. How do I set the stage for that is the Bricks O'Brien Twitch channel the place for it is is literally any live stream I have the place for it on Twitch where family friendly content is nowhere near as prevalent as it is on YouTube. And that's something we've talked about before yeah. as a, as I guess maybe a bit of a segue into like yeah. family friendly content and yeah. that being my main thing and live streaming on Twitch. And why am I bothering on here? Should I just go to YouTube? And all these things are part of what I'm considering for, for next year. Let's talk about it then. Let's talk about the, the whole family friendly. That was a touch point uh, on the last crossing the streams you're on. I think it's a touch point of everything that you and I end up talking about. Uh, and it, it came up today during my live stream that you were, you were talking, you're in my chat where 
it came up. Uh, I would love to talk about your thoughts on the whole family friendly thing in relation to streaming, as well as just how it impacts your content and continues to do so. I guess we can start with like defining what family friendly is. And I feel like that's even a, uh, to some people they might see it as lame or that it's a bad word or um, restrictive. And I disagree, obviously, Mm -hmm. uh, because family friendly in my eyes is not the right word for it, I guess. Family friendly means not swearing during the content, um, not diving into topics that would otherwise be divisive or uh, extreme Mm -hmm. with the way that you're especially uh, uh, going about discussing them. Uh, Making content that is suitable for all ages. Can you sit your kid down in front of the TV and have them not walk away being scarred or asking a question that's awkward for mom and dad. Right. That's where I kind of define it. And everybody has a, I think not everybody, some people have like a loosey goosey definition of what's family friendly. And there's a, you need to have a certain standard to it. And for me, a reason why you're family friendly and, and maintaining that as your brand standard I guess I'll I'll bounce a question to you yeah. for a half second here. Yeah. What do you define as family friendly? I said the same thing that you just said, right? I, I'm a I'm a father. I have I have kids, and if I can sit like you just said, if I can sit my kid down in front of it and not worry about like you said having them ask a question about something weird that they heard or like, I want to be able to trust that my kid can, can consume that content and that they're not, they're, 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 they're not seeing or something or hearing something that they, they shouldn't ordinarily hear. It's, it's, it's really, it's really easy, right? If it's, and I, I think target age, I think in terms of my own kids, my youngest is six. That's kind of, if I could sit him down in front of something and not worry about the content that he's consuming, then I consider it family friendly. With that in mind, so I'll, I'll give an example of something that clashes with that ideal. Cause a lot of people ask me, well, Brian, have you considered doing a channel where you're more mature than anything else? Um, and the answer is no, because my brand guidelines as Brian Saviano Bricks O'Brien is whatever I'm doing has to be family friendly, or at least as family friendly as possible, right? Right. If you're dropping f bombs, s bombs, or even more offensive terminology to define somebody, which is not any way acceptable, and that shouldn't happen in the first place, but especially in content, then mm-hmm. I'm not a part of it. And it's a, it's as simple as that. It is not negotiable. It is this is how I operate, and that is it. So, for some people, they are still family friendly with their language, but I actually sent you a screenshot the other day or more where somebody (laughs) was live streaming and they say, Hey, come check out my family friendly live stream as they're playing call of duty war (laughs) zone, shooting guys in the head with blood spurting out. So (laughs) it's, it's, it baffles me when people are like, Hey, the stream is family friendly. No, you're shooting guys in the head with an AK 47. The content in my opinion has to match your mission statement as a creator whether that's family friendly or otherwise calling your stream family friendly as a apex streamer or a call of duty or red dead Two, don't even bother because there's a line in call of duty war zone when you drop down and the guy on the radio is like, blah, 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 sort this bleeper out. The language in the game is swearing. So like, what's the point? What there's no, it, you know, it might be a, a, a religious thing that they will, don't want to swear, but that doesn't mean that the content of what you're doing is family friendly. So that's where I kind of clash. I don't know how you feel. I, I 100% agree. You were there for this conversation I had with a streamer called Halcon. He was on a follow Friday with me last month. And he he said when he, he introduced himself and talked about the content that he produces, he said family friendly. And being familiar with what he does, I had to stop him there because I was like, <laughs> I did. I, I I think I brought it up like this. Like, I don't think you're family friendly. <laughs> yeah. 
what and then I asked, I was like, what makes your stream family friendly? And he's like, well, I don't I don't cuss. I don't drop S bombs or whatever. And I do try to keep the things I talk about relatively, you know, friendly to, you know, f family friendly. I was like, OK, but I was like, you play seven days to die, which is a like zombie shoot him in the head type of game. He he plays a lot of those types of games. I was like, you can't really apply just your language to it. The, it's the whole package of the content that's on your screen. So if you're playing games like a zombie shoot them in the head game, and these are like zombies bleeding and doing all kinds of gross stuff, like this is not, it's like, you can refuse to curse all you want, but that's not family friendly. So uh, I agree right. with you on, on that sense. Yeah. That also applies to chat. That's right. another thing to keep in mind as well. I got a raid from somebody the other day who is the audience is other Twitch streamers or Twitch savvy people. Mm -hmm. So they are probably 20 something age, you know, year old, whatever. So my auto mod caught a lot of what they were saying because I keep it super strict because the language needs to coincide with my brand statement as a family friendly content creator. And for me, as much as it stinks, as much as it sucks, like I can't have in my little chat box that appears on stream, I can't have F bombs go across the screen right. while little Declan is watching. And I, I can't, I can't let it happen. So it gets caught all the time. Um, I don't actually even see it, but people in the chat were like, Hey, um, I can't say anything in here. Well, it's not that you can't say anything. It's just, it, it doesn't coincide with the typical Twitch etiquette or uh, target demographic, I guess, which is why I'm like, why am I even streaming on Twitch in the first place? If those, if that's the audience that's out there, you know, the 20 something that is watching Warzone or whatever, where do I fit as a strict, strictly family friendly content creator? And do I, who are the most successful people on Twitch that are family friendly? Nick A30, who plays just Fortnite. Okay. Well, he just does one game for the most part. So yeah. who else can I look at? Is it me? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's an opportunity, so, I guess, for you, right? <laughs> uh, you know, but if I talk to Twitch, I I, I went on um, a Nerve Center with Bruce Green, and they were like, you know, it's really great that you're family friendly, and you know, there should be more of that on Twitch. And they're like, yeah, so you can restream the content and then get a certain like little incentive. And I'm like, well, is Bruce family friendly or? whatever and they're like well we can't guarantee that he will be like he's not belligerent but we can't guarantee it. and i said that no. i can't accept it and it and it stinks so if there was somebody from twitch that's like we need a family friendly content brand ambassador i'm a hot pockets brand ambassador too add it to the rolodex and get me on the front page i'll be your guy you're gonna need a you're gonna need an updated card when this is all said i, I need to update my card every six months at this rate. <laughs> you know, i'm thankful but yeah we got a question in chat from Fireheart. What is y'all's opinion on people using that tag for streams that are family friendly in content and streamer, but then other streams, they turn the tag off when they want to play not family friendly content. So uh, your brand presence matters if you're trying to make it into a thing. And so to me, it doesn't make sense to have your live stream be family friendly. And then let's say, you know, you're sitting your kid down, they're watching it, and then you suddenly switch the tag off and you drop an F-bomb. Well, what's the point? Uh, you you can end the live stream all you want to. You can do whatever you whatever else you want to. But as long as you're linking to it and it's an active part of your portfolio, in my opinion, it needs to be consistent. You know, you don't go into Target and then look for, like, jet engines. You know, you're going yeah. to, like a factory to go get it. Like it needs to be consistent. Like who's the general person that's going to target? What are they looking for? A little bit of everything. Like it, it has to fit within the, the realm of what, what people are looking for. So if you're going to do something like that, it should be on a separate channel where maybe you're having a specific release. That's like, Hey, this is not family friendly or this is not whatever. But then also keep in mind, you're doing this separate brand entity that needs its own, garden to be tended to so you're doing two channels consistently so do you really even want to bother with that 
or do you just want to bite the bullet and keep things family friendly on your main channel? I've seen in a couple places that there are streams that are kind of trying to walk that line, figure out what they want to do. But that means they're they're trying to be a little bit of both, which then it makes it really tough, right? Because where your channel is, is where the content lives. So even if yes. you do a live stream today, that's family friendly, but yesterday you did something that wasn't. And then someone is browsing your videos really easy to go from one video to the next. Or if you're Correct. living in a YouTube world, YouTube has the autoplay option. So then, you know, you finish one video, could go to the next. So my perspective on the whole thing is you got to choose what you want to do. You want to choose what you want to be. You need to decide on what your brand is. And I know I know the whole thing of like, hey, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a complex person. I have a lot of things going on. But when it comes to branding, when it comes to creating content, if you want to actually build something from it whether it be a twitch channel youtube channel whatever you kind of have to figure out what you are and then run with it so if you're gonna be family friendly be family friendly if you're gonna be pg-13 be pg-13 if you're gonna just be mature i mean you could be mature whenever you feel like it but don't label yourself as as not so i think that's really where where my head's at on that particular I'm glad we align. And the comment from Dr. Cat builds in the chat is interesting. And it, it, it kind of applies to me, not in the family friendly sense, but in the, in the other live stream program that I do. So I'll, I'll read off her question and then frame kind of what I am going through right now. Mm -hmm. So it's enough. If you label it as it's going to be off brand, that's okay, but it needs to be super clear. So I would immediately at the gate disagree because for me, as much as I say during my fireside Friday chats, Hey, um, these streams are not about video games. It's not about typically the jovial topics we cover during a Minecraft live stream. No matter what you do, what you say, you could put an age gate warning on it. You could flag it as not safe for work with blinders, with a manual click puzzle for it to go in. There's still going to be somebody who is not supposed to see the live stream and they're going to see it. So that needs to be kept in mind when you're doing your content it needs to be a channel that is not linked or relevant. It's essentially building a whole entire different thing to completely maintain your brain con brand consistency, in my opinion. Right. That's just me. So for me and my fireside chats, they are not gaming my, uh, Minecraft or you know Hot Pockets and blah, blah. It's, it's not about the flair. I turn all the redeems off. All the sound effects are off. There's not even stream alerts. So if you follow, nothing happens. I just read it off like normal. So as somebody who is a family-friendly content creator focused on having a good time during my typical gaming streams, how does a more serious podcast formatted show like a Fireside Fridays fit into my brand portfolio as of right now? Does it become its own YouTube channel? Do I start a new Twitch channel to just stream it on? Do I not even stream it and just upload it as its own podcast. Like I'm, I'm struggling with that right now because that is the only thing that is inconsistent with my general brand, I guess, as Bricks O'Brien. Right. So I would pose that to you or more. And then anybody in the chat in terms of like, how do I handle that going forward? And, because it, it's valuable. People love it. The people who are there love it. And they love seeing that side of me as a creator, being a bit more serious and insightful with whatever, topic is at hand and the engagement is great. So how do I treat it with the respect it deserves while not compromising the Bricks O'Brien brand? Yeah. It's it that that's tough. That's a really, really tough thing. And I think the 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 situation uh that I think a lot of creators aren't thinking about potentially, right, is is when you start getting the sponsorships and deals right when you start making partnerships with particular brands and companies and they're signing up to be like hey you're going to represent our product or our service bricks o'brien the family friendly content creator so then at that point if you start messing with your brand if you start changing what you do that puts those partnerships in danger, right? Yep. Or it also closes a lot of doors 
for brands that are possibly looking at you and they're like, oh, he's not as family friendly as I thought he was. So it's really tough to like just say, oh, you, you can't do it or you or not. They, you can't you, you can just do, you know, maybe once in a while you can ch- you can change it up. It makes it really difficult to say that. Um, right. And then and then the whole looking at what you're talking about now is, OK, you would love to do a podcast, but how does that how does that live right in this whole ecosystem that is the brand of Brex O'Brien? I'm inclined to say maybe it is a separate channel or it's a separate thing. It lives on its own like the podcast would live on its own as a as a completely separate thing. Uh, it's tough. That's a tough one. Uh, I'd love to hear what chat thinks, honestly, if there's any if there's any thoughts, but uh, right. Definitely- because the, the, the stream content, like last night, my fireside Friday was like how to cope with failure. Right. Mm, yeah. If you're here for Minecraft, you don't want to hear about how bricks O'Brien thinks he fails at life and he's the worst. So the engagement with chat is good. And the, the words that are spoken are still family friendly, but the tone is very different from what I normally do. Right. That is the big issue. And then, yeah, like, do I upload it to its own platform? And then I got to tend to that garden and then, oh, it's consistent now. And now I got to make it a thing. And when I'm not feeling it, then I'm not going to put it forward. So, or do I just scrap the idea entirely and not give that perspective to people who really enjoy the firesides, which I don't want to do because people really enjoy them and it allows them to see a different side of me than that. And I think that's valuable as part of not just me as a person, but me as Rick's O'Brien to show that, you know, I'm not just, Hey kids, it's Minecraft. It's okay. Now the, all the kids are, you know, asleep. The adults are by the fireside having some vacation juice. Let's talk about life. Like I'm trying to think of good examples of this and I can't, I'm coming it's up. Not really. Two. I'm really coming. Yeah. I, I just, I'm, I'm trying to think of like who, who could have, would have done such a thing. And it gets really tough, right? When you're like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a family friendly content creator. I can't think of a single situation where like, oh yeah, I also have the whole separate thing that I do that is not family friendly. So it's right. And it, Bobo is Laveau brings up a good point. Like those kids watching the game still hear about it because I can't control whether they show up at the stream or not. I say it's not particularly for young kids, but then it still brings up topics that adults need to talk about with their kids about problems. And it's not, it's not bad. Pro- like the firesides are not, Hey, let's talk about racial inequality. That's not where I go. I don't go there because that that is a beyond the realm of what I would cover in terms of being a personality Bricks O'Brien. Not that I don't have those conversations in real life with my friend, like whatever. Like I'm not afraid of those, but the Bricks O'Brien channel is not a place for that. But how do I deal with adversity? You know, if I'm feeling sad, How can I overcome a feeling of sadness and and try to boil it down to more emotionally driven internal things? That's typically what the firesides have been. Mm -hmm. And if those questions are being brought up by kids to their parents, then I think, I think that is a good thing. Taking away a stigma of mental health in, in a way from a, from a role model that they see playing Minecraft. Okay. Well, he's talking about how he thinks he's not doing well. Well, that's not true because I love Bricks O'Brien. Why do people feel this way, mom? And then it's a little bit of a dialogue. So I think there's value in that perspective too. So thank you for bringing that up, Bobo. There's no, I think, clean way to do it. And it's it's definitely, I'd like to think that that's probably part of the reason we don't see it as often because it's just a really difficult thing to navigate. I think that potentially keeping something on a somewhat like living on its own in its own in its own way might be the way to go but that's a tough one man that's a real tough one right and as part of the kickstarter uh one of the th- obligations that i deemed upon myself because i wanted to do it was a thing called the pro gamer podcast where i'm interviewing specifically family friendly content creators so it's crossing the streams, but with only family friendly content creators, because I don't think there's any other program that's specifically like it. And that's something I want to do. It gives me a chance to reach out to some of my favorite people and be like, Hey, show up on my podcast. Like, let's do a thing. So maybe there's merit in that. And then if I decide to move forward with it more just for the passion of it or the reception, well then 
okay, let's open it up to family friendly Lego streamers. And then who's family friendly? No, really, who's family friendly? <laughs> and I bring them on and then make a season two out of that. Yeah. And okay. Uh, what can we do for season three? Maybe it's developers of family friendly games and then try yeah. to try to have this overarching thing to give perspective that, you know, family friendly is not a hindrance. It's an opportunity to present yourself in a unique way, which is yeah. how I've worn it and not enough people, I think, wear it um, because it's difficult, but it isn't for me. So yeah. that, but that's just that's just because I'm. Mr. Pro Gamer, Hot Pocket Ambassador, uh, PlayStation <laughs> 5 winner. So, you know. Yeah, this guy, this freaking Bricks O'Brien, man. I recognize how challenging that is, honestly, as someone who, you know, as a parent, tries to find things for my my kiddos to watch. Or, you know, if they, they're finding things, I kind of check out what they're watching. And then, you know, being a parent and reconciling that against being a content creator makes it difficult makes it different mm -hmm. uh gossip d says being an adult streamer isn't a bad thing either and we're not i i'd love to be clear in that i don't think it's a bad thing at all like there's no like i think that's perfectly fine like there's nothing right. wrong I, with I, I watch people that aren't family friendly too yeah yeah i mean technically a lot of the stuff that i stream like in, in the game side is not at all and so right uh that said it it's really the it it, it's not like one's good or bad. It's really like, how do you tailor your content and, and as a result, your approach to that content? Because right. when you start focusing on something like that, it demands in a lot of ways uh, per, a particular approach, right? There's certain things you can and can't do. So Right. And I think being a adult streamer, is in a lot of ways easier because you can make funnier moments out of the way you can articulate your swears and present them as a clip on TikTok or whatever. And, you know, it's all, it's all good. And I watch, like I said, I watch people that aren't family friendly all the time. And who's to say I'm not family friendly in real life, right? You don't, you, 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 you don't protect, you know, I'm a 26 year old guy from Boston. Like, you know, maybe I do swear in my real life. You never know. But that is, the challenge and the opportunity with being a family friendly content creator yeah. is that you can present yourself in a way that doesn't use swearing as a crutch, which is what I see so many streamers do, especially the war zone people who oh, are just yeah. going to drop a whole bunch of F bombs to try to make a moment out of it and then clip it. And it's like, you're not adding to your content by dropping a bunch of swears and covering these inappropriate topics there's a better way for you to go about it that you can articulate yourself, your, your emotions, your delivery and, and jokes as a, not even as a family friendly content creator, but not relying on swearing as a crutch, you know? And right. yes, Fargonaut, I do park the car in the Harvard yard. Man, there's, there's a lot of good stuff going on in chat right now. I do want to call that out. There's a lot of wonderful talk about what is and what isn't, you know, family friendly as well as like what is considered right, wrong. The, the thing is, I, I don't consider anything right or wrong, right? Like, I don't, I want to be clear, like, if you're not a family friendly streamer or content creator, that doesn't make you bad. The vast majority of Twitch and even YouTube is like, even in video games is not family friendly. Like, that is just that is it's is actually very very normal and there's there's nothing wrong with that and 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 that's why to to his credit i i i'd say to you brian that i super admire the fact that you are going for that demographic because it makes it really difficult to create content because you're you're in the minority there when it comes to producing something and like you said yourself in the last crossing the streams that you're on it is really difficult to legit find other uh, creators who do the same thing. It is overwhelmingly rare and people that I vibe with because you, you go on YouTube and you see, Hey everyone, we're going to do a mystery box. Yay. And they literally talk in that voice. And I want to throw my head through a brick wall right over <laughs> here. And that's <laughs> not what I'm looking for. Like, I, I don't want to collaborate with, yeah, not no, 
So how many people are out there? I have a list of five people that I'm going to have on this podcast that I'm like, yeah, I could, I could rock with you. Cool. All right. And then beyond a lot of that, it's like, ah, you know, now we're getting, so it's, it's tough, but when you find somebody that you, you vibe with, it, it ends up being great. My, what I want to do in, in a previous life where actually not a previous life, my current life, I'd love to be in like a, a late night talk show position, yeah. right? They don't swear on air. They bleep the swears from guests, but a Jimmy Kimmel, a Jimmy Fallon, whoever is finding a way to articulate themselves while keeping it clean, not insulting the audience by it being kid jokes, but not, not being profane. That's what I want. But what form does that take in terms of being a internet personality as opposed to traditional media television? Right. Whatever that is, I want to do, I want to do that thing. Right. That's my thing. You know, what's fun is I am in completely the same camp as you when it comes to that. I feel very similarly. And that's probably why we, we work well together when we talk about this stuff is because, you know, I mean, again, I don't consider myself family friendly, uh, obviously through the games I play, things like that, but when it comes to how I think I come across, how I create my content, the when I address, uh, when I'm talking to people out there, it, it's not that I'm against swears. I swear, but it, it takes a lot for me to even get there and to even use it. I think it's just how I like to communicate, right? And it's how, you know, kind of the, the sort of thing I appreciate. And again, let me be clear. If you swear or you swear a lot, I... I I consume a lot of streams like that myself. It just comes down to how I like to communicate myself when I'm the one in front of the camera. So, you know, it's 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 fascinating. And I, dude, I I think it's incredible that you try that you're doing this and that you try to keep this this a hundred percent consistent brand. And it's really tough, especially again as as you make those billion dollar deals, right? Like as you begin to get those business partners, it becomes something that you have to continue to look at and ask yourself, is this consistent with the Brian Saviano brand that I'm really trying to, to grow? The more you work yourself into that, the more the brands recognize it. And the more the brands are, the brands that are willing to work with you, they're going to hold you to that. So a hundred percent, a facet of it. And I have no problem denying a sponsorship. And you might say, well, Brian, Mr. Pro Gamer, who said in his book, you know, eat healthy and exercise. And I'm not saying eat Hot Pockets every day. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm going to shill Hot Pockets every single second of the day. I purchased Hot Pockets willingly before they sponsored me. So Mm -hmm. that to me was enough of a reason to say, yes, this is a sponsorship I feel comfortable gunning for. And by the way, this is my first sponsorship ever was Hot Pockets. First Mm -hmm. one ever. Nothing, nothing before then. Mm -hmm. Zero. I've had uh, platforms that I obviously submit videos to, but they're not, they're not a partnership. This is, this is a sponsorship. Legit. I'm not in the ambassador network or anything like that. It's literally, there aren't many other brands that I would be comfortable associating with. The most easy one that streamers go after is like, Hey, here's G fuel. Hey, here's waifu cups. Here's what, no. Yeah. I literally (laughs) make fun of it in the book. It's like a powdered chemical nonsense. And no, I'm not going to endorse that for families. Hey, kids, put these chemical, this powdered chemical in a cup, shake it about and drink. No, that's not consistent with my brand. I have no issue saying brand names in that situation. Yeah. That yeah. will never happen. I will never endorse one of those. A sparkling water brand. Now we're talking. All right. Yeah. Um, other things that are consistent with me. Absolutely. So keeping yourself consistent with the brand deals with the partnerships, with the people you associate with on Twitch, you know, and on, on YouTube in general, like if you, if you're following all these very um, conspiracy theory driven outlets and it's like, well, now you're going to mention this on stream. And it's like, that's not consistent with like who you are, you know, keep it. And and that, not that I'm engineering myself to, to do that. I just like, cool people and i associate with good people because that's what i want in my life like Mm -hmm. that happens with friends and family and and people that i meet through this screen which you are one of them if you were a dog water person i wouldn't be talking to you right now and i know you're not a dog water person which is why i feel comfortable doing this and recommending you in my discord channel because i know this is going to be a good show and you're a good guy that deserves support 
So retweet his tweet about Hot Pockets. And let's get this man a couple thousand dollars worth of Elgato gear and a red microphone. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. I love you too, man. I really do. Thank you for that. It's such a, like, you. we could spend a whole show on on this. We could have an entire consistent podcast, like, recorded weekly. But uh-huh. unfortunately, um, you do so much already yeah. on top of a content with having, you know, multiple kiddos and uh, a yeah. wife and game dev jobs. So until yeah. that day where you secure the Hot Pocket sponsorship, yeah. you quit everything and just talk Lego and podcasting all day. Uh, well, that'll have to wait. I would be, I would be stoked to to do that one day. It would be something that I would, I would, I would totally do if if it if it paid all the bills and fed my family. Of course, not just hot pockets, but you know what I mean, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> but honey, I got all these hot pockets. And I can, <laughs> I'm quitting. I'm <laughs> Uh, pick me up some lean pockets why don't you it's like no it says hot pockets it's a different brand dang it we have to we have to do this (laughs) um andy's andy's lego had a question we're gonna shift slightly but he he asked uh you know what what do you enjoy most about streaming in general it's it's entirely the money um i like manipulating (laughs) people for money and whatever means i can take uh every waking dollar out of your bank account. Uh, that's what I live for. So Andy, uh, stop typing in my chat. Go put a book in your cart at shop.bricksobrian.com and feed me with <laughs> Buffalo chicken pizza. Uh, I'm sick and tired of you being in this chat and not giving me money. So um, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Just the awkward silence. There it is. There's the answer. Man, the I, I love it. We have so many. I, I always have so many good clips after these shows. Uh, there you go. <laughs> of you. <laughs> I'm going to invite chat. Uh, if you have more questions, please throw them in there. Uh, if you have more thoughts on this sort of thing that we're discussing when it comes to content, please yeah, do. And, and while, while chat comes up with wonderful questions, the thing yeah. that I love most about streaming, besides the fat stacks of cash, yeah. is. Uh, interacting with people in real time, it's much easier to do a podcast or just be myself when I have a bouncing board. And I've spent many, many years recording videos with nothing um, and, and just talking to myself in this room for so long. And I can do it and I can do it really well and people enjoy it. So when I have chat or anyone to bounce off of that matches my energy, then that's when the real magic happens. So any situation I can find myself in where I'm bouncing off of other people, especially when you vibe with me, um, that's when I enjoy it the most. And if I'm feeling good on a live stream, I'll keep going and going and going. The most um, prevalent example has been like during the past uh, Beyond the Brick 24-hour charity streams where Mm -hmm. I would bring on all the people from the community as much as I could to be on there and bounce off of for 24 hours straight because... I don't want to. I don't want to listen to a brick wall for four, four, 48 hours, whatever. So let's bring on everyone, and then it's amazing. And so many great memories are made of that. So anytime it involves other other people, I love it, and I want to do it more. And if streaming takes on more of what I do, great. But for right now, it's all the different videos being distributed across platforms, and maybe podcasts are a part of that picture uh, eventually. And real quick, Corbob, yes, that's because you're in Canada. Canadian shipping and Australia shipping sucks. It's <laughs> it literally just how it is. I'm sorry for all my international people right now. It sucks. Wait till I get distribution out, and then it'll be much more cost effective for you. I got a question uh, from Fireheart. Do you have a favorite streaming moment? There's so many. There's so many. I uh, well, the most recent one was when after two years, two and a half years of developing the book, I opened it and saw it physically for the first time. I, I, I'm i welling up kind of thinking about it because it was such a pure moment in my, in my life and in my career. You spend so long like making this thing and having so many errors and so many people who don't care about what you're doing on, on the secret side of it and then when I finally revealed it to the world on my my birthday live stream, to have it be fully funded in two hours, to have 
every expectation exceeded by every single measure. That to me, that moment of unbox, I get ch- literally chill sick. I got goosebumps right now. Yeah. Like thinking about the moment that I opened it and shared it with everybody, that was very powerful. And it was a moment that I owed to everybody who stood with me for all the live streams and listened to me complain about it, all the podcasts talking about it, and all the work that I put in for so long. Sharing that was an obligation, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did it live. So that would be my favorite moment for 2022. That or funding the book, and I'm sure I did stupid stuff in between. Then that justified fun moments. There's a yeah. lot of them. Thank you. That you know that was a great moment. I got to see it in live, and man, like I got emotional for you as like your friend. Like I'm tearing up. Uh, cause I saw, I saw your freaking face, man. And I was like, yeah, I, and at the time it was the same thing. I was like, it, it's just a, such a wonderful moment to see that. So, uh, and, and that's why I, that moment too also encourages hopefully other people to like follow that thing they want to do and yeah. share it with the world. And if it's a cool thing, a good thing that you believe in and put your maximum effort toward and push through then it will resonate, it will succeed, and it will become a thing. And I need to remember that more often because even in those moments where I was going to cancel the book and I didn't believe in myself, everyone else believed in me, which is why it became an actual thing. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) Kevin didn't cry. Kevin said, Kevin didn't cry. (laughs) Someone, someone, yeah, someone had to be the rock. Right, uh, exactly. It wasn't gonna be me. It wasn't gonna be me. <laughs> uh, let's see. There are more questions. Brian, what's your favorite hot pocket? I always go with the pepperoni as a safe bet. Yeah. And I look forward to exploring more now that I have uh at least 200 hot pockets in my back pocket. So <laughs> that answer will change eventually. Look, I will let you know. You'll just have to tune in and see what my answer is I, a couple months from now. I expect this is I've you know, if if I get this this thing as well, uh, I I will totally do a tier list, and so oh, I would love yes. to see one from you. Uh, we will have to uh, put that in the books for some time, uh, either beginning of twenty twenty three, or we'll cap it off end of the year. Yeah. But I, I believe we're due. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is a real question or not. What's your favorite Roblox game? <laughs> Roblox funny fact is actually the one game I refuse to play. There it is. Okay. I didn't and I know refuse that. <laughs> to play it. I, I refuse to play it because there's enough games in there that are very suspiciously weird. Yeah. And yeah. here's guns. Like it's weird. Um, I think every creator kind of <laughs> has that game that they, they won't play. Um, so that game is it for me. And then in case you didn't know it from watching any of my other videos, um, the someone who goes by the completionist on YouTube, um, he does completions of all different video games, 100%. And yeah. he said in one, uh, a bunch of different times that he will retire once he completes Donkey Kong Country 2. That mm-hmm. will be his final game he does mm-hmm. of all time. Mm-hmm. Once he does that game, he's done. And so I adopted that where if I do a playthrough of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door on the GameCube, my favorite game of all time, that's when I will officially be done doing gameplay videos. So in a similar way, everybody has that that thing they're leaving for dead last and the thing they'll never do, and those are my two. Yeah, that's amazing. Yagi asks, how do you like grilled cheese sandwiches, buttered bread or mayonnaise on it? Did you say mayonnaise? Yeah. This is a thing. Absolutely not. Okay. There it is. Now we know. Absolutely. And the, the not. real no, excuse me. Real issue here, Yagi. It's not about the bread, the butter, the mayo, the cheese. I'm telling you right now, Yagi, if it's made with love, it'll be good. The amount of times I've had people who were indifferent to my existence, make me food. I felt it in every bite that I took. I just want to feel the love in my mouth. And I feel that with the bite of a wonderfully crafted grilled cheese. If it's a wonderfully crafted Thanksgiving dinner, I want to feel love oozing into my mouth. 
and I don't get that enough. So if the grilled cheese is oozing into my mouth with love, then I'm going to enjoy it, whether it has mayo, butter, or otherwise. There's so many good clips there. So you're welcome. I'm Hashtag content. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Kevin asks, any notable regrets from 2022 efforts or projects? Every single time I've gone with you to a convention for an extended period of time, Kevin, what a miserable, miserable. No. Okay. So the last convention we went to, that was a slog. That was, that was painful. That was very painful. Um, no, but for, for 2022, one of the things that I uh, promised for the Kickstarter was to do the comics and I haven't consistently done that every week. So that was a, that's a regret of mine uh, professionally. Um, other than, other than that, there's obviously the, the, the obvious, I want to spend more time with friends and family, but I'm also at that age where this person's doing this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing, and this, thing. And this person's trying to have kids and this person's getting married and everybody's, scatterbrained all the time and it's, it's just difficult so while other people are focusing on their things i'm focusing on my things and i want to reconvene more often so that's always just an ongoing regret that i try to just work toward because my life as of doing this content can be fairly solitary which i don't like but it just is the nature of the work a lot of the time mm -hmm. which is where conventions come in to help out and and make for a great thing i regret traveling so much to all these different things I want to make more of an event out of the travel I do commit to, the conventions I do commit to, instead of willy-nilly doing whatever. I went to like San Diego and Amsterdam and you know a show in Rhode Island. I went to Minnesota and Chicago. And that sounds very privileged to me to be like, you're complaining about getting all these free trips to go everywhere, Brian. But like it's a lot of it's a very it's exhausting. Yeah. So honing that in is gonna be, like I said, a big part of, of next year as well. Absolutely. Bobo Laveau asks, what was your favorite Brix O'Brien art piece? Of all time? <sighs> okay, one. so Pro Gamer's Guide doesn't count. That's Pro Gamer's Guide, not Brix O'Brien. Right. Ooh, favorite art piece of all time? Uh, the Christmas card. The mm -hmm. Christmas card that George made. I had him commission... I, I commissioned the illustrator of the comic, George Marm. He's a um, he's a, he works for an animation studio and is based out of Mexico. And I encountered him through Instagram discovery. He was one of those guys that had under 5,000 followers. And I'm like, absolutely does not deserve this. I need to commission you for something. So I, um, I, I've worked with him on an ongoing basis. Um, and the Christmas card, I was looking at it recently because I fulfilled, uh, some of my Patreon stuff with the, with the Christmas card. Mm -hmm. Um, when I look at that, I see, the warmth of Christmas and in the picture frames that are on the wall, I dedicated some of those spots to my moderators. So it's like very vague portraits of them. So I got to honor them. There's content creators that I featured underneath the Christmas tree as uh, wrapping. And there's the stocking for Brian, Polly, Cecilia, the cat and the bird characters and the book that Brian is reading. You can't really see it, but if you zoom in on it, it says Pro Gamer's Guide. That was a foreshadowing mm. to the book that would be announced in like two months from that point. Mm. So that's my favorite piece of Brix O'Brien art. I don't know what Kevin's talking about in the chat with <laughs> you lying to him. <laughs> I don't I know what, what piece of art did I tell you? I'm curious. Let me know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Because uh, Pro Gamer's Guide is different, Kevin. <laughs> it's a different thing, technically. He tells all his artists he made his fit. No, that's not true. That's not true. What's a favorite art? What did he send me recently? I got to look in the archive. Dang it. All right. Anyways, okay. any other questions or more? Uh, Boba Laveau asks, what should a streamer consider as they develop a retirement plan? As a what? As they develop a retirement plan. Listen, the world's going to burn before that happens anyway, so... <laughs> Hey, listen, lot. Kevin, that's Pro Gamer's Guide artwork, the, um, the unboxing artwork. That's that's Pro Gamer's Guide artwork, not Brix O'Brien. That's PG. Kevin, on the night of the unboxing, he made this beautiful piece of art that was a, it was a doodle of, um, it's Brix O'Brien wiping a tear away, holding the book, 
is surrounded by all the pet pal characters and Kevin doing like a little wink into the camera. That's yeah. one of my favorite pieces of art ever, but that's Pro Gamer's Guide artwork, not Bricks O'Brien specifically piece there. So <laughs> just saying, Kevin, it's still one of my favorites, but for clarification's Kevin. sake. Kevin's saying that's different. <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it what's next like what is in the near future i know you have all these plans that you know you're hoping to do podcasting etc there's all this other cool stuff is there anything like right around the corner is there anything cool that's going on soon well soon is relative because when sure. you blink in this life it ends sure. up being march and you're like where did time go yeah so um immediately immediately happening um, I'm releasing a t-shirt design for Black Friday that's of like Super Mario Odyssey inspired. So like Mario is obviously very important to me and people love it. I love it. So that's releasing uh, this Black Friday. It's got Bricks O'Brien, all the Pet Pal characters with all different outfits from the game. It's really, it's super adorable. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of in the future for 2023 immediately, I like to always make a big event of my birthday live stream, uh, the Bob Bonanza as I call it. Uh, there are plans for that. Uh, the plan is to release this little guy over here. If you're watching the video version of the show, it's uh, the Bricks O'Brien plushie. Oh, so yeah. this will be available for pre-order and will be a, a pre-order campaign. Uh, currently working to finalize everything and how we're going to go about doing it. But uh, that's going to be available at the Bonanza. And then uh, next year, in August will be the five year anniversary of Bricks O'Brien. Wow. I am not a as much of a fan of celebrating the smaller milestones. I like the big ones. So like my birthday and now what will be the five year anniversary are the only two like big anniversary things I celebrate. Like some people celebrate. Here's my first. Here's when I created my YouTube channel. Here's my first video. Here's 10,000. Here's 100,000. Here's my stream anniversary. here's my affiliate here's my partner and i'm like i don't do any of that i do the big ones and hone that all in to make a big big thing out of it yeah. so i have plans for the bob bonanza i have plans for my five-year anniversary and if you are in any way interested in who i am what i do and how i go about doing it those are going to be two very cool things to be part of or to at least watch as they happen the Bob Bonanza is going to happen on January 21st, 2023. I'll be turning 27 wow. and there's going to be some good stuff unfolding. So you will not want to miss it. I cannot wait. It'll be a couple months, but looking forward to it as usual, man, man, I, I'm just, I'm glad that we're friends and I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked to see what's coming because I feel like you are just getting started. So uh, congratulations to you. I'm glad that we got to like take this time to catch up a little bit. The, uh, you know, I'm going to call it out now, Brian. You're the first like returning guest where we get to kind of catch up and get to see what uh, a guest has been up to since. And I mean, look at you, you have done a lot. So there, and there's a lot more around the corner, I feel like. So, congratulations to you. I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I love of our course. I love our conversations. I want to leave this off on you giving any final thoughts now that you know some time has passed since we last spoke. Uh, any any imparting wisdom or just final words that you want to leave? I'm going to go ahead and give the floor to you. Well, thank you, and I appreciate all the the kind words. And I see you as a you're you're a peer. You are a friend. And in, in like this career, it's not often you get like feedback from people that are like on your level and you can, you can vibe with and you are, and I, I appreciate everything that you've said. So thank you more. Um, if there's anything that I've learned this year between the Kickstarter for my children's book, the hot pockets thing is that even when I don't believe in myself and feel like I will fail, that I am not enough, that I cannot accomplish this thing. There are so many people that you have never met in your life that believe in you more than you do. And you owe it to yourself, to your friends, family, the people that love you to put your best foot forward and continue every single day 
to do whatever it is that you're passionate about in life. If that means you're dedicating 10% to it today or 110% the next day, something to move forward to keep you doing your thing because you owe it to the world to be the best self that you can possibly be even when you don't believe it.